Well, Dr. Norman Balo Gunjo is now. She's a public health relations analyst. Thank you for coming on this morning. My pleasure. Good morning. Well, well this has raised a lot of concern. Uh, this scenario, I think, about as of yesterday, it was reported that uh, Delta states, uh, I think, they put 32 people under surveillance, and many yeah. just wonder. And the fact that there was a doctor who was also involved in this one, that's massive dropping of the ball. That was yeah. shivers down the spine of patients yeah. like us. What could have happened? Well, looking at the particular case study, there are different ways to it. Now, one of the things that have been confirmed is the fact that his wife came out negative with respect to the Lassa fever virus. Yeah. And so that means that um, the possibility that he could have contacted it from a patient is very high. Now, whether we like it or not, there are ways of start, as in, we have to look at all the root causes of all these issues. We had, in 2012, we had Lassa fever outbreak. In 2014, we had Lassa fever outbreak, and there were fatalities. In 2000, December 2015, up to January 2016, we also had this outbreak. And for all the different outbreaks, what we have seen over time is that policymakers, you know, bring in a lot of policies, a lot of reactions, saying, oh, we are on top of the game. Now the question is, what went wrong? What happened to the monitoring system? What happened to the surveillance system? If um, Lassa fever is something that has been with us since 1969, and for a lot of countries, even for countries in West Africa, or for countries within Africa, over the years, some of them have had to, you know, like do away with it through continuous surveillance. So if we had this between December and January, why are we having it now? And like you said, the case study, one of the, the, the very first confirmed case happened to be a medical doctor. Mm -hmm. So what went wrong? I think this poses a lot of, um, um, a lot of questions to our monitoring system, our capacity as a health system in Nigeria. And really, many times, from many of my own discussions, I look at the Sustainable Development Goals. As at the last time when Nigeria couldn't meet the Millennium Development Goals, even though there were countries like Eritrea, Rwanda, that were able to meet up, I thought of it that so, um, so many things will be able to change by the time we you know, start the Sustainable Development Goals. More so, the United, um, the United Nations Secretary, Secretary General came to Nigeria and met with the president. And of course, he did affirm the fact that, oh, Nigeria is going to really be on top of the game in terms of sustainable development. So now, with all this happening, mm -hmm. some days ago or some weeks ago, we just had the idea of polio. Yeah. And now Nigeria has lost the certification, at least for this year, until 2019. And now Lassa fever. So really, what are we doing that we are not doing right? So that kind of raises questions both for the health institutions yeah. and the individuals, yes. the, the practitioners, the experts in the field. Because yeah. in the case of the doctor, for instance, one would have thought that um, he should have been, because it's not the first time he would have heard about this kind of case. So okay. is this the, do we say, the less than 0.5% margin of error on the part of every professional or practitioner? That is a possibility. And then secondly, you know that um, for many of all those hospitals that we have in Nigeria also, especially at the primary health care level, the level of diagnosis is still something that needs to be considered. Um, for a lot of people, we know that Lassa fever, one of the presenting complaints would have been fever. And um, considering the fact that this was an epidemic that we had between December and January this year, it is possible that this particular medical doctor could have at one point or the other missed it and probably assumed, oh, it could have been any other thing. And in a situation where, for many times when people get to the hospital, the very first thing they tell you is, they even start the malaria drugs and then tell you, go and do the test. You would have had the contact. And so there are a lot of issues. It's not here to explain it now. The best we can just do is to give different hypotheses of what could have happened. But whatever way it is, is obviously something that has shown that really we need to probably get better with respect to our strategies in dealing with all those diseases, mm -hmm. reimagining diseases in Nigeria. Let's get Mark West's uh, question in. Mark West? Okay. 
Well, that definitely, you know, you've raised more questions than, than given answers, uh, Doc, especially when you talk about what could have gone wrong with monitoring and so on and so forth. And for a lot of people, this is even more troubling because we've been told that Lassa fever tends to spread more in the dry season. And the rains have been here for quite a while. So what, in your opinion, do you think could have explained this Lassa fever outbreak uh, in the middle of the rains? One of the things that we've seen over time is the reemergence of all these communicable diseases. And whether we like it or not, we know that there has been a distortion in the, um, in the way the seasons have been over the years. Now, the climatic changes that we see, not only in Nigeria, it's happening everywhere, can be one of the factors that we're looking at in discussing this particular issue. Now, what happens is that in a situation where, if we had had a situation where the community surveillance was really very effective and there is collaboration with other sectors like ministry of environment people that practically you know use the geographic information system and then can say oh now the climatic change means that because right now this is relatively like the dry season but you know that we have some episodes of rain here and there and so it just means that um the um what's it called the the reemergence of these particular diseases through the multi-mammate um, um, rats, it just means that the, for that particular environment, we had some cases of flooding over the last few weeks in Delta region and other areas in the Northwest. So climatic change can be a factor. And it is one factor that we have to start looking at because those are things that we have to deal with. There are a lot of issues affecting the climate in Nigeria, in countries all over, and other countries are dealing with it. They are trying to look at this as this is a situational thing that we have to work around. So is there a way where our health system monitoring and surveillance system can now work around these different climatic changes okay. to be sure? Let's take right. a quick break, uh, Dr. Namras. We'll be back in a moment. Join us again.